In this lesson, we'll talk about a specific kind of Python errors called exceptions. We'll review some known situations in which such exceptions can occur. Then we'll learn how to prevent exceptions from terminating a program as we intercept them and handle them more gracefully. We'll see how we can even raise our own custom exceptions. And finally, I'll propose a problem where you'll practice all these new concepts. Let's do it. Python errors are certainly not new to you. If you've been following along with the examples and problems I've been proposing so far, it's inevitable that you have stumbled upon some stubborn errors that demanded some time and effort to solve. While some errors are detected by Python before it even starts executing your program, such as syntax errors in your code, others are detected only when the code is running. These errors are called exceptions. Python can raise exceptions under different circumstances, such as an invalid operation, an unexpected data type of a variable, an invalid combination of arguments in a function call, and other reasons. Let me show you a few examples of Python exceptions. In this one-line program, we calculate the result of 5 divided by 0. A division by 0 is an invalid operation, and the way Python reacts to this is by raising an exception. When Python executes this line of code, it terminates the execution of the program right away and prints the output shown here into the terminal. The last line of this output includes a keyword identifying the type of exception that just occurred. In this case, zero division error, followed by a brief description of the problem. The top part of the error message includes information about the name of the file and the line number where the error occurred, followed by the line of code itself. When an exception occurs unexpectedly, this information is useful to track the source of the problem and debug your code. Here's another example. In this short program, we create a list composed of strings John and Mary and save it in variable names. Then we attempt to access the element at position 2 in the list and print it. The two elements present in the list occupy positions 0 and 1, and therefore the provided index is invalid. When this program executes, Python raises an exception of type index error and shows us a message reading list index out of range. And one last example. Assume the following one-line program, which attempts to concatenate strings hello with number 3 using the plus operator. As we've studied before, the plus operator performs a concatenation if it's surrounded by two strings, and it computes an addition if it's surrounded by two numbers. However, a mix of these two data types is actually not supported, so running this program also raises an exception. In this case, the exception name is type error, and its description tells us that Python can only concatenate a value of type str with another value of type str, but not an int. All these examples correspond to exceptions raised by Python when code that is otherwise syntactically correct is executed in an invalid context. But exceptions can also be raised explicitly if you decide to use this mechanism to handle your own errors. Let me show you how to do that. The syntactic construct used to raise an explicit exception is composed of keyword raise, followed by the type of exception to generate, and a description of your custom error given as a string in parentheses. Here's an example. The following short program asks the user to enter a positive number. If the number entered by the user turns out to be less than zero, the program raises an exception of type value error explicitly, whose description indicates that the entered number is negative. When we execute this program, its output says enter positive number. If we now enter a negative number, say minus two, Python terminates a program with a similar output as we've seen in previous examples. This output reflects the exception type and description we used in the raise statement in our code. If you enjoyed this content, you may watch the rest of this lesson at computersciencecam.com, linked in the description below. You'll be able to follow along with coding samples and problems in our embedded code editor. Drop your questions in the comment section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel. Thank you, and happy coding!